Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in this great big universe. My name is Helena Roman, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Love Unlocked. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that today's video is for educational and informational purposes only. Please be nice, especially in the comment section down below. Today's guest, who doesn't need any introduction at all, we have Desmond, and you know you know him. He is one of the more beloved writers on Quora, especially in the niche of spirituality. So let's go ahead and welcome Desmond. Hey, can you hear me? It looks like he's connecting to audio, and he can't hear me yet. So there he is, the man of the hour. Hello. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. I'm so just, I was uh, just trying I was to get rid of the all viewers, the. Uh, here we go, talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> letting the viewers know who you are. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Ah, well, I'm 66 years old. I know I don't look it, but I am. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm basically a scientist. I've been a scientist all my life. I went to university studying physics and mathematics. And uh, I found myself in IT because my degree had some computer science in it. Um, and I've been all over the world doing that. I've worked in London. That was fun. Um, London and now is I'm beautiful. back here. Sorry? I said London because is beautiful. It is. Very. Um, I felt completely at home there. It was wonderful. Uh, and now I'm back here and uh, I sort of, well, I, I was still working in computing uh, in uh, uh, database administration, which is, uh, you know, like writing reports and storing data and uh, inquiring on that data to, to give people information on things. I was working for Queensland Health, which is um, uh, the health department of Queensland government. And uh, and then I left. Uh, and uh, a real tree change. I came to uh, this region, which is just to the north of Brisbane, which is the capital of Queensland. And uh, um, this is where I had my awakening i suppose i've been a spiritual person somewhat all my life i've always been interested in uh, esoteric things uh, and um, i just i well i i found myself in a very spiritual place actually uh when i moved here uh, it's a very um eerie sort of area that i was living in um, i had a farm 27 acres and uh and i sold that unfortunately um and moved to where i am now and along the way i was conducting an orchestra because i'm also a musician i'm a trumpet player i was conducting an orchestra and i met the person i believe to be my twin flame so that's that's where it all started really <laughs> I was telling the viewers before we came on that you're more one of the more beloved writers on Quora in the spirituality area and niche, and that you've given a lot of people a lot of great insight on the subject of twin flames. And you have some very interesting information regarding physics and synchronicity. Do you want to tell the viewers a little bit about that? Um, well, I, I, I don't know that the synchronicity fits with the physics that well. That's um, true. <laughs> um, ultimately, everything is connected. Um, we live in a world that looks like it has four dimensions. That's three dimensions plus time. But we know that there are lots more. Just in our own universe my feeling is that we have more than that again and that 
you know, we, we talk about different dimensions, right? We, we talk about 3D. 3D is this. Um, and it'll only ever be 3D. This is what people get a bit confused about because they talk about 4D and 5D and, and those exist, but they're not something that we can get to within 3D. All we can do, I think, is shift from one parallel universe to another by increasing vibrations. We, we talk about densities and things like that and vibrations and whatever. And to me, that's actually more a shift from one, one universe to a very, very close parallel universe. One that's so close that you can still see the old one, but you can start to see the new one as your as your vibrations increase. You know, um, so I'm still working. <laughs> on, I'll try to figure out how vibrations work with 3D, um, and whether or not whether or not the 4D and 5D have anything to do with that. 5D is where the soul is. 4D I call the the astral realm. It's uh, the, the realm with one extra dimension, spatial dimension, that allows you to go around walls, right? Uh, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a 2D thing, right, a, a, a piece of paper with a square that you've drawn on it, and you've got a dot in the middle of that square, and that dot wants to get out of that square, right? Well, it can't unless it goes in the third dimension to jump over the line that is the side of the square. Is so, that like quantum jumping? No, that's no something different again. Okay. <laughs> quantum, quantum. No, it's something different. <laughs> it's, okay. it's quantum jumping is, is energetically moving from one energetic level to another without being in between. Okay. Right, and and that's the way particles work. Particles, particles can't really exist um, other than in certain states, in certain certain not really positions, but probability states, if you like. They can't. They can't. If they can be there or there, it can't be there. So, how do you get from there to there? Quantum jump. That's a quantum jump. All right, and it, it's 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 done by the absorption of energy usually, and it comes back down by the re, the emission of energy, and that energy is usually um, a photon, a quantum of light. So yeah, that's that's quantum jumping, but the, this jumping that I'm talking about before, that's if you've got a three, like you've got a two D, and you move in three D to get out. If you've got a three D room. You can move in 4D, the extra fourth dimension, not time, a, another spatial dimension, to go around the wall, just like you go around the line by jumping over it. You can go around the wall by jumping over it in this other dimension. So that's what 4D is. That's I, that's the astral realm to me. That's the the way you go from from in your body. Uh, through a wall and then travel to wherever in the universe yeah that you want to be that's amazing because yeah. I, yeah. I know that a lot of the viewers watch and they read you on Quora and where you write and they're fascinated by the physics aspect of it thank you so much for explaining that well, I know that I, I don't know how good that explanation is it's a, a I mean, you know, nobody studies this stuff. So, you know, from the, but you do. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> from, you study from the it. perspective of physics, um, I'm probably one of the very few that have actually tried to relate spirituality and physics because I I I do believe that being a physicist, I do believe that that um everything in the universe is explained somehow by physics. Now, if we can't explain it, it's just we don't know enough yet. 
So the idea that that uh, spirituality is something that's outside of physics doesn't fit with me. I, I you know, it's just another dimension or another density or something like that that we haven't discovered yet. So there's, you you had mentioned before that there's maybe even ten dimensions that we live in. Yes. That's interesting. We've got the four that we know. That's the one, two, and three, and time. Right? But as well as that, I mean, it could be more than 10. <laughs> it could be more than 10. But we know pretty much that it's going to be 10 at least. And the others, there's going to be six of them. They're actually wrapped around the other three dimensions. Like a burrito? Um, more like the the coating on a wire. Okay. If you've got a dimension that goes like that, right? Um, you can wrap a dimension around that dimension. Think of I, I, this is not my analogy; it's something I've read. Um, think of an ant um, walking along a, a very thin wire, and it looks like it's walking along a line. But if you get very, very close, you can see that the line is actually a cylinder, right? You could, you, you've got something that's wrapped around it. Okay. Well, that's, that's sort of like these other dimensions are. They're wrapped around the dimensions that we see. They're tiny. Uh, the reason they're there is so that things can vibrate at that level. String theory says that particles aren't actually particles. String theory says that particles are um, little circles that vibrate. That they, that, like an electron, for instance, isn't just a particle. It's a little whirl of energy that vi that that vibrates and spins at a certain speed related to its energy. Can so, people go from dimension to dimension or from parallel to well, parallel? Well, we don't know. That's I'm I'm theorizing that's how they do it. Is that they their vibrations raise so they can move from this universe to the next one. Right? Right right next door just along another dimension that we don't see now this is this is a dimension that's outside of those 10 that i was talking about right so you actually go into the neighborhood into the next uh universe right next door to the one that we're in by increasing our vibrations that's that's how i think it's done <laughs> Don't know, obviously, because well, one, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I'm still here talking to you. Yeah, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll probably all go up at the, at the same time, but um, for the moment, we're still in this 3D universe. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like. Yet. We just have to wait and see. I think. Now you mentioned raising the vibration. How can we do that? How can we raise the universal vibration? Okay. I think we individually can do it just by thinking and feeling higher. Is that a, a description I could use? Like more <laughs> positive. Yeah. Well, more positive, yes. But I think what's happening, I, everybody I talk to, including people I talk to where I live, um, says they can feel there's a shift. There's some change happening. Energetically, people are starting to feel something's brewing. Um, of course, there's all sorts of nasty things happening around the world. That's part of it. That's part of the transition. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect us. Um, there has to be a split somewhere. You know, and 
that sort of thing, that low energy stuff goes in one direction and the, the high energy stuff of people like us that want to want to move into another plane um, are going to have to move away from that. There's going to have to be a split. And I think that's what's happening right now. That's my feeling. You know, you are a brilliant scientist. I have read your writing on Quora. And I think a lot of people will very much appreciate what you've just described because it is hard to wrap your head around. You know, when, when you have these, you know, when you talk about physics, the physics side of energy and how we as people, we can raise our vibration to vibrate at a higher frequency, I guess it would be, you know, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. Do you have any tips on how to keep your your vibration in check, like your thoughts in check? Does that mean that if I think negatively or if I have a fearful thought, something bad might happen? I might manifest oh, that thought? It, it's not. I don't like the idea of manifestation. Um, I think basically manifesting tends to be something where you your, your intuition tells you something's about to happen and then you manifest that and it happens right like it happens because it manifests because it was going to anyway it's we just... our intuitive ability sensed it i see what yeah. you're saying yeah that makes yeah. sense about manifestation um, there is a there's another aspect to this called uh what's the word they use co-creation uh, super super determinism super determinism um basically super determinism says that everything has already happened it already has happened when we choose our lives we choose the lives that we're going to live basically by looking at the life that has already been lived Right, we we sort of go into that life and live it out like a movie. Might that be why we experience deja vu? Yes, yeah, that's, you that's and, basically the reason for that. Yeah, yeah, because you and I had a an email conversation, and you mentioned something to me about the fourth. What was that? The fourth. The fourth turning. The fourth turning. Thank you, and. Yes. And I was thinking to myself, I know I've had this conversation before. That is a term <laughs> I do not remember. I should remember. But you did. I feel you did know the term. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was a very strange experience. I personally have not experienced. I've experienced a few deja vu's in my life, but that was a pretty intense deja vu. And so, what do you want to explain to the viewers real quick? What is the fourth turning? Okay. The the fourth turning is the fourth of four, right? That started right after World War II. Basically 20 years, roughly, in each one. Um, there's a period of expansion and everything's good and everything's blooming and uh, and that's wonderful for 20 years or so. And then for the next 20 years, people get complacent they live high and mighty and, you know, they're, they're really just benefiting from what the situation is after that rise, if you like. Then there's a fall, which is uh, everybody gets to the point where they're just, they're not doing anything anymore. They just sort of resting on their laurels and, and not do, doing anything to keep going with how things were. And then you get, that's the third turning. And then you get the fourth turning, which is the low. It's the, it's the crisis. It's the, the point at which, um, it's the point at which all wars happen. They call about, like wars happen all along. But in the fourth turning, and there's been many of them, you know, every 80 to 100 years, you have one of these, like, there's a special word for it, but basically one of these sets of turnings. And the fourth turning 
The last force turning was World War II. That gives you an idea of the sort of thing that happens in fourth turnings. And where two is right. Yeah, that's right. And this one's going to be pretty bad too. <laughs> I don't know how bad. But everything is aligning. I mean, we've got we've got lots of things uh going on. Like spiritually, um, we're heading into a time where everyone can feel something's about to happen. I know Can't I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh there's a lot of cycles, uh, cycles of the earth. We're heading into a time when things are going to get really, really bad with the weather, with the climate. And I'm not talking about global warming. I'm talking about um, a return to an ice age. Yeah, I keep hearing about people, that on the news. Yeah, a lot of people don't realise we're actually in the middle of an ice age right now. We've had something called an interstadial um or an inter interglacial, some people call it. But basically what it is, is we've got about a million year long ice age, uh, ice age and every 100,000 years or so in that million year ice age, we have about a 10 to, 10 to 12,000 year interstadial where it warms up a bit and then it goes back. After, after 12,000 years, it goes back. Um, to for another hundred thousand years, <laughs> right? And then it, it warms up again, and then it goes back. And the, we've had we've had any number of these, and we're we're now in the middle of a. Well, actually, no, we're not in the middle. We're at the end of the last one. Last one of these interstadials. We've we've actually warmed for. 11,700 years. So we're really well and truly due to go back into an ice age. But everybody's everybody's worried about global warming. Well, funny thing about this is that the, the, they've got um, uh, ice cores and that sort of thing that show what it did at the end of each of these. And at the end of each of these, the temperature goes crazy and then it plummets so you know people are worried about it being hot now right now i'm very hot here it's a very hot day um but this is just the the precursor let's say to the next big change so that's an earth cycle and now we've got these these civilization cycles as well once every hundred years or so, we have a real, really nasty crisis. And that's what's happening right now. Um, you know, let's hope we all survive. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that none of this is real. This is another thing that people, I, I, one, of the, one of the things that I could say to you about how do you stay positive is to understand that none of this is real right everybody thinks that they're a person a body walking around we've got about 80 years on the earth um in which case in which time we've we're walking around in this meat suit right that has this arbitrary thing this untouchable thing called a soul attached to it but that that sounds like it's very limited. You know, we can't see the soul. We can only see our bodies lasting for, you know, 60 to 80 years, uh, and then we die. And we, you know, we've got no ideas. Well, we've got ideas, but we've got no evidence, no proof of what happens after that. But... That's the wrong way to see it. That's the wrong way to look at it. We're in a universe that is created by all of the spiritual energy, which is in the universe, right? It's a, it's a simulation. I've heard that used, that term used a lot, a simulation. Um, 
we have these bodies, but they're inhabited by our souls. We don't have a, we're not a body that has a soul attached. We are souls that are inhabiting the bodies that we walk around in. And those bodies are sort of like a, a sensor cluster. Right. An experience haver. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a good way of putting it. A sensor cluster. We have yes. our our feelers out. We experience things. We have a human experience while we're here. Our bodies are the vessels that we travel around in, kind of like that old car I drive around in, that old beater car outside. That is my vessel that, that takes me from here to the supermarket. But yeah. but this is our bodies. This is very similar. We are souls having yes. a human experience in our bodies. That's a I love the way that that I love the way that you express that. Thank you. You're welcome. I it's not just my idea. I mean, lots of people have said things like this, but I've spent a lot of time thinking about how it all works. Um, you know, the the fact that we've got these these this universe around us and we've chosen to be in this body right now this is our soul that chooses that but our soul can also at the same time choose to be in another body and another body right it, not necessarily even on earth it could be somewhere else i don't know right but the, it, the thing is it's a choice by our soul to incarnate in that body for the experience of that life Right now, from the 5D perspective, 5D is where the soul is. 5D is called 5D because it's 4D plus time, which becomes a fifth spatial dimension. So everything, when you're in 5D, as a soul in 5D, you can see all that's happened in 4D and 3D. Over the time that it's happened, that being another dimension, not time. You don't experience that time. You experience that as just another dimension. Oh, you want to see what happened at the end of that life? Oh, it just worked there. Right? So you, you don't even have to, I suppose you just think it. I don't know. It <laughs> sounds like I'll you have kind of a, like a bird's eye view. Yeah, like well, yes. View. Yes, that's right. And you choose to come into that life to experience that life, and you already know how it's going to finish. You already know how you're going to die. It's sort of planned because it's already happened. This is under the this is under the super determinism way of looking at it, and it fits with everything I know, you know. Because how does precognition work? Right, precognition can only work if something like your future self right or your soul knows what's coming now how can they know what's coming unless it's already happened it's just logic i know it feels really strange but that's the logical way to look at it i think there's more people that would agree with you because you just explained it so well than you might think there i've seen a lot of people express that exact same sentiment regarding you know has have have our lives already happened are we kind of living in almost like a simulation is this a redo did we make this choice to be here thank you for explaining that well that's exactly how i think it works i think i think we make the choice oh, sorry okay now i will i will say i think because obviously I don't know, only by my intuition telling me, right? But I think that we choose to live these lives and we come here to, to live these lives and uh, learn from the experiences. And there are right? people who have, they're born, with these kind of memories of making certain choices, making a choice, yes. who are their parents? What well, will their life be like? 
actually you and I and everyone else has those same memories, right? We've all done that. We've all done that. We just, we can't remember. Now, why can't we remember? We call it the veil of forgetfulness, don't we? We call it the veil of forgetfulness. We, we uh, There's other names for it as well. But basically the, the way it's painted is that um, we sign a contract or we choose in some way to forget it all. Forget everything we already know and start afresh, right? Now, how do we start afresh? We start afresh as a baby, mm -hmm. right? How do we know anything as an adult? It's because of things that have been stored in the brain that we've got that's been growing since we were a baby. We didn't know anything as a baby. We sort of, we, we did actually know lots. We knew everything our soul knew. But over time, we stop being able to remember that because we can't, we start only being able to see or hear or touch or think or remember whatever has gone up here. So the veil of forgetfulness is our own body. It's our mind. It's our brain. The brain can't handle all of those memories. The soul can. And when you when you get intuitions and flashes and memories and whatever coming through from the soul, right? That's when you remember all this stuff that you you haven't even experienced yet. <laughs> stuff that that you shouldn't be able to remember because you've never been through that as a as a person since you were born. But the re the reason you're remembering it is because you've got a leak coming through from your soul through the subconscious. The subconscious remembers everything because the subconscious is not your brain. Your brain is your conscious mind. Your subconscious is everything else. It's your soul. It's it's your higher self it's your intuition all of those things you know the best way to let your intuition work it's to simply just randomly choose things right because when you when you when you randomly choose something i mean truly randomly not thinking, oh, I'm going to do this randomly. I'm just really, truly, randomly just say, I'm going to choose that, right? Like um, the f if you see a pile of tarot cards, right? Three piles of tarot cards. You want to know which one has the message for you. you Don't just think about it. it. You, just, you just let it open and then you go, bang, I'm going to choose that one. And that's the one that has the message for you. And this is because your higher self knows, right? It knows because it's in contact with your future self or your soul or something that tells you. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Mm. Many times... Many times I have made random choices, not not talking about tarot cards, just in general things that I needed to do. And it was the right choice, at yes. least for that scenario. And in some situations where it might not have been the best choice, I learned something from it. Yeah. I learned valuable yeah, I, information. Yes. So yes, it's it all a learning kind of, experience. Yeah, it all kind of comes full circle. And it looks like our timer's coming up saying we have to end. But Desmond, I'm hope. thank you so much for being here. I'm hoping that you'll come back. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you. That would be wonderful. We would love to have you back. And so if you guys have any questions for Desmond, please do send them our way. And my email is in the description of the video because he is willing to come back and he will answer our questions. Thank you so much, Desmond, for being here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please remember to like and subscribe and become a member of our YouTube community. You guys have a wonderful night now or day, Thank you. wherever you are. Bye now. <laughs> Bye.